Hey guys, welcome back to another video, and today I am back to talk about Spider-Man No Way Home, but the more fun stuff version, starring Tom Holland, Tobey Maguire, Andrew Garfield, Willem Dafoe, Jamie Foxx, Alfred Molina, Rice Ivans, and Thomas Hayden Church. With Spider-Man's identity now revealed, Peter Parker asks Doctor Strange for help. When a spell goes wrong, dangerous foes from other worlds start to appear, forcing Peter to discover what it truly means to be Spider-Man. As you guys know, this movie is my favorite Spider-Man movie, my favorite movie 2021, and it's one of my favorite MCU movies along with Endgame. So when I heard that there was going to be an extended cut of this, I was like, oh my god, yes, I'm so excited. We could finally get to see the um, Mysterio uh, stuff and what his role could have been, and we could finally see the Green Goblin versus Tom Maguire fight, like, and all of that. Sadly, they don't, uh, those are not in there. Um, and I think the thing with this, too, is that I actually, it's a bit sad, because I like the theatrical cut a little bit more than the extended cut. Because I think the extended cut is really good, and there are a lot of uh, great stuff in it, but there are some stuff that I'm like, I understand why you could, why you cut this out. Um, but a lot of the other stuff, I don't know why they cut that out. We'll go through the movie in a minute, but seeing, like, since the movie's now been out for a little bit, and I'm actually talking about an extended, a extended cut, I can actually now talk about a lot of the spoilers because, as you guys know, I didn't talk about. I didn't do a spoilers review. The sports review, the reviews I did do were kind of forced short, if you know what I mean. Like when I showed my mum No Way Home, um, she kind of forced it to be shorter. So I, so now I can actually talk about a lot of the stuff uh, that I liked about the movie. Um, in the theatrical cut and this cut, but seeing Tobey Maguire and Andrew Garfield on the big screen gave me a huge smile across my face when I saw it on opening night with my friends. And seeing all the villains return with Tobey and Andrew and the reason, and uh, it was one of the reasons why I loved No Way Home. Uh, why well, I love No Way Home, right? Uh, is seeing my past two Spider-Man that I grew up with, like even Tom Holland I grew up with in uh, some aspects, uh, because he was the first one I saw in the cinema. Uh, but Tybee, I remember watching his first film and his third film. Um, I remember watching the first one on VHS and being given Spider-Man 3 uh, from school one day. And I remember watching... Uh, Amazing Spider-Man 2 at a friend's house, and, like, yeah, so, though, seeing those characters made me have a huge smile across my face watching this movie, um, and seeing Tom, Tom Spider-Man come to his own, uh, is another reason why I love this movie, um, it's one of my favourite movies of all time, but I want to talk about the scenes that they have added in the more stuff, fun stuff version of the movie. I love how it started with Tom, Toby, and Andrew just talking to each other over a Zoom call, uh, basically talking to us, and how Tom and Toby are like, Andrew, we have something to say to you. We love you. And Andrew's like, about time, I've been waiting months. I've been waiting months since that day in Atlanta. Uh, that That whole thing was great. I think that... I think it's maybe because that they are Spider-Man. Like, all three of them are Spider-Man to me. So I think that they might climb as my favourite uh, MCU trio um, above Iron Man, Cap, and Thor. Even though that that trinity, that trio is your classic MCU trio. But I think the three Spider-Mans got to be on top for huge Spider-Man fans like me. But... That whole Zoom call just made me smile. It really did. And also, we finally 
I got to see uh, the scene where the robber comes out, steals money, Spider-Man zips him up, and there's this whole argument that goes on of, like, Spider-Man's, um, how do I put it? Spider-Man's, uh, not decision, but, like, of, you kind of see how, uh, the city is split on Peter Parker being, or Tom Holland's Peter being Spider-Man. Like, you have one person kind of standing up for him, and then the, the other one's like, oh, you don't, how do you know if these two aren't working together? And, they're both like, and I was like, this guy, oh, I don't know this guy, I barely know him. Uh, which is kind of funny because the guy playing the robber is actually Tom Holland's brother, which is very funny. Um, and it was so cool to see that scene because after that, that's how we got the whole um, bit of um, this Mysterio, uh, this guy that really stands up for Mysterio and believes him grabs paint and chucks it on Spider-Man's suit, and that's how, that's why Tom Holland's suit needs to be flipped. And that's kind of a, like, that's not a main plot, but it's kind of a uh, mini plot, if you know what I mean, like, uh, for the middle of the movie. Like, from that scene till the scene where Tom goes to see Aunt May and Defo Willem Dafoe's Norman Osborn's there. Um... It's kind of a mini plot for that. Like, that kind of starts that plot with the black suit and why he has to turn it inside out and then why he asks Aunt May to wash the suit for him. Um, but I thought that the deleted scenes in the apartment where Peter Parker is still fixing the villains, I thought that was great. I thought that that stuff you could have added into the movie because it would made it a few seconds longer, but not, like, ten minutes longer, if you know what I mean. Um, because there's something about the way that everything was shot in that scene that I didn't know if it was part of the more fun, if it was just for this cut, or it was also part of the theatrical cut. Because when they're all looking at Ock, like, there obviously there's talk happening on the ground, but when they stop talking on the ground, you see... Sandman look up, and then you would see Electro look up, and the foe look up, and, like, I don't know if that was in the theatrical cut, to be honest. And it's one of my favorite movies of all time, and I remember a lot about No Way Home, but I can't remember about those specific shots were in that. Um, but there was a lot of stuff there, like, that scene more uh, Charlie Cox as Daredevil was pretty cool, um, and seeing him take care of Happy, uh, being his really good lawyer, um, was really, really cool, and I love seeing Charlie Cox, and I'm just about to review She-Hulk after I do this, right, so, seeing Charlie Cox get this big resurgence in both the theatrical cut, this cut, and She-Hulk now, is really, really cool, which is kind of funny that Vincent D'Onofrio is only in Hawkeye at the moment, which I know he's going to be in Echo and Daredevil Born Again, but it's like Daredevil will make more appearances than, than Kingpin will ever be, um, which is kind of funny to me. But, um, yeah, and I think that having the more fun stuff version is pretty cool. Uh, but I do understand why they didn't want to include it in the theatrical cut because it didn't need to be in there. But it was cool to have those scenes and to see what they exactly were. Because there are a lot of scenes um, that is Betty, uh, B. Brandt interviewing the teachers and more funny bits there. And she interviews Ned and they start talking about their relationship uh, from Far From Home which I thought that that was a great relationship. I thought it was not a, um, how do you put it? I thought it was kind of a disservice to have them break up and not be a thing in this movie because I would have liked to have seen their relationship develop more. Um, and, of course, she interviews Peter Parker for a little bit and 
um, that bit's kind of funny. So, and also they kind of get more extended and alternate versions of J. John Jameson scenes, and that was one of my, not the faults of the theatrical cut, but one of my nitpicks was that, um, is that J.J. didn't have a lot of screen time, which in the Raimi films, he, like, yeah, he wasn't one of the main characters, but he had, he had a lot of, uh, bits in there, and a lot of jokes, and everywhere, every scene, he'll pop up, uh, in the Daily Bugle. Um, but this one, they actually do kind of do that thing where it's like, it is a very Sam Raimi, uh, J. John Jameson thing where it's like, some of them will be voiceover, some of it will be him on screen, uh, some of them he'll be on phone calls and stuff, so, even though it's not the same J. John Jameson, even though it's played by J.K. Simmons, who played him in the original Spider-Man trilogy, um, it's cool to see that... J. John Jameson um, had more that we didn't see. Um, but at the end of the day, um, like, there there are some extended bits, like, um, there are some bits of, like, Andrew Guffer basically going, like, it's so cool, man, I want to see the holes uh, to Tom McGuire when they're talking about um, Toby's organic webs, which I think is kind of, I think it's really cool that they did that. Um, but yeah, and also, um, because that, it's cool to see the extended cut and watch it. If you like Spider-Man No Way Home, but if you don't like it, don't bother. Cause it like, you will think that everything will be just a waste. So, I think that Nick is Bone No Way Home, the more fun stuff version, is three and a half out of five stars. I do like this cut, but not as much as the theatrical cut of No Way Home. At the end of the day, if you love this movie, you will like the theatrical, the theatrical cut. I, I mean, the extended cut. I don't think you will love it, though. But, it is really good. So, guys, please, if you haven't already, hit the like button down below. If you haven't already, hit subscribe. And also at the little bell, I kind of know for future videos I make. And I'll see you guys next time. Take care. Bye. Hey there. Subscribe to my channel. And also press this bell icon.